Sarajevo. Bosnia-Herzegovina's vibrant capital, located in the heart of the Balkans, is one of my favorite cities in the region. It's the country's political, economic and cultural center and I love the vibes of the city, its bustling atmosphere and the super kind locals. In this Sarajevo city guide, I'm taking you on a city tour to my top 20 favorite places in Sarajevo. At the end, I'll provide a few additional helpful tips that will help you to make the most out of your visit to Sarajevo. But let's get started and check out the best places you don't want to miss when coming to Sarajevo. Sarajevo is nestled in a lush green valley along the Biljatska river and surrounded by mountains. It has a rich and diverse history that dates back over 500 years. Founded by the Ottomans in the 15th century, the city quickly became an important cultural, religious and commercial center in the region. Sarajevo's strategic location on the crossroads of east and west attracted people of various ethnicities, religions and cultures, leading to the multicultural character it has today. Sarajevo's more recent past has been marked by the grim events during the Bosnian War in the 1990s when it was besieged by ethnic Serb forces for nearly four years. The siege of Sarajevo resulted in extensive destruction, loss of life and suffering for the city's residents. Today, Sarajevo serves as a symbol of resilience and reconciliation and numerous landmarks, memorials and museums commemorate the victims of the war. Let's start our tour at the beautiful Sarajevo City Hall, also known as Vizesnica, which oversees the banks of the Miljatska River that cuts through the city center. The City Hall is one of the most iconic buildings in the old town and a must-see when visiting Sarajevo. It was constructed in the late 19th century during the Austro-Hungarian rule of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Designed by the Czech architect Karel Parik in the pseudo-Moorish style, it combines elements of Islamic and Oriental architecture. The stunning building used to house a huge historical library, but much of it was destroyed in flames during the Bosnian War in the 1990s. Fully reconstructed and reopened in 2014, it now serves as the seat of the city government and houses various administrative offices and institutions. Its historic halls and chambers are also frequently used as a cultural and educational center, hosting a wide range of events, exhibitions, lectures, as well as concerts and conferences. Right behind the city hall, we immediately enter into the narrow but very lively streets and alleys of the Bajajia, the vibrant old town of Sarajevo, which is without a doubt the beating heart of the city. It is here where you will find most visitors of Sarajevo and the labyrinth of cobblestone alleys that are lined with many colorful shops, bistros and restaurants are the most popular part of the city. The perhaps most iconic landmark of Sarajevo is the famous Sebili water kiosk. The much photographed Ottoman era water fountain stands in a lively square in the heart of the Bajajia. Flanked by shops, cafes and restaurants to both sides, this is a great place for people watching and soaking in the special atmosphere here.
Let's head over to the next must-see landmark of Sarajevo, the famous Gazi Husrev Mosque. The iconic mosque also dates back to Ottoman times and can be seen as the religious center for the majority Muslim population of the city. The mosque dates back to the 16th century and was at the time commissioned by Gazi Husrev Beck, the Ottoman governor of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was part of a larger complex that included a madrasa, a clock tower, a covered market hall and other buildings, all constructed at the same time to revitalize the city center. Right next to the mosque, you cannot miss the tall historic clock tower. Besides telling the time, the clock tower also serves as a useful fixed point that can help navigate the narrow streets of the old town. Just a short walk from the clock tower, we arrive at the historical Gazi Huzer Begova Bezistan Bazaar, commonly known as Bezistan. This large covered market is also part of the city revitalization program of the 16th century governor Gazi Huzer Beck. The stunning architecture is characterized by its large dome shaped roof and arched entrances. The building is made out of stone and brick, with a spacious interior divided into rows of small shops and stalls. The central dome provides natural light and ventilation, creating the perfect environment for the many merchants and traders to sell a wide variety of goods, including textiles, spices, jewelry, souvenirs and household items. It's a fun place to wander through and explore, although you may be able to find better prices elsewhere. Let's head over to the yet another must-see landmark in Sarajevo city center, the famous Latin Bridge. The Latin Bridge gained fame as the location of the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary, which triggered the outbreak of the First World War. On June 28, 1914, the Archduke and his wife, Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, were assassinated by Gabriel Princip, a Bosnian Serb nationalist, while traveling in a motorcade across the bridge. Besides the historic significance of the bridge, the surroundings of the bridge area are definitely also worth checking out. On the way to our next destination, it's time to taste some of the excellent food in Sarajevo. Numerous restaurants, bistros and cafes offer affordable lunch menus and the choices are almost a bit overwhelming. If you're not a vegetarian, you may opt to go for a hearty plate of chevapi, the famous minced meatballs that come in the shape of sausages. But there are also plenty of vegetarian options available. Let's visit one of the powerful memorial places of the 1990s Bosnian War. Located a short walk away in the northern part of the city center, the War Childhood Museum is dedicated to preserving and sharing the experiences of children who lived through the war, which raged here in Sarajevo from 1992 to 1995. The museum is dedicated to collecting, preserving and presenting the personal stories and belongings of children who grew up during the Bosnian War and the powerful exhibits raise awareness about the impact of war on children and promote empathy, understanding and reconciliation. The collection consists of personal belongings, photographs, documents, artworks and other artifacts donated by war survivors who were children during the conflict. These items offer moving insights into the daily lives, struggles and resilience of children during wartime. I could not imagine a better way to demonstrate the uselessness of war and I highly recommend you come here and check out the museum when you're in Sarajevo.
from the museum, it's just a short walk back into the streets of the old town where we visit the Sacred Heart Cathedral. Also known as the Sarajevo Cathedral, this prominent Roman Catholic cathedral was completed in 1889 during the Austro-Hungarian rule of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The cathedral is renowned for its impressive neo-Gothic architecture with pointed arches, ribbed walls and elaborate ornamentation. The cathedral features a large rose window about the entrance, intricate stone carvings and soaring spires that dominate the city skyline. Its interior is equally impressive, with high ceilings, stained glass windows and beautiful altars. The cathedral sits right at Feradia Street, a vibrant pedestrian shopping street that runs parallel to the Miljatska River and connects the old Ottoman quarter with the modern part of the city. It is one of the main thoroughfares in Sarajevo and lined with a mix of historical and modern buildings. The street features a wide range of boutiques, cafes, restaurants and shops that offer a diverse set of goods with everything from clothing, jewelry and souvenirs to artisanal crafts, antiques and specialty foods. Where Ferradia Street merges with Marshala Tita Street, you will find the Eternal Flame Memorial, which serves as a tribute to the civilian victims of the Second World War and the Bosnian War from 1992 to 1995. The memorial also acts as a symbol of peace, remembrance and hope for the future. The simple yet striking design of the monument consists of a bronze eternal flame on top of a white stone pedestal. The flame burns continuously, day and night, and represents the resilience of Sarajevo's residents and their commitment to never forget the hardship and tragedies that Sarajevo overcame in the 20th century. A short walk further down the street will take us to Veliki Park, also known by the locals as the Great Park. It's not quite as impressive as New York's Central Park, but it is one of the largest and most popular green spaces in Sarajevo. Veliki Park has a rich history that dates back to the late 19th century when it was first established as a public park during the Austro-Hungarian period. The park was designed in the English landscape style, featuring meandering pathways, lush greenery and ornamental plantings, and some of the lawns are dotted with what looks like Muslim gravestones. The perhaps most notable landmark of the park is the striking memorial to the children that were killed during the four-year siege of Sarajevo. The names are listed on seven cylindrical metal columns, and the fact that so many columns are even needed is devastating. On the way to our next must-see place, I passed the strikingly beautiful Ottoman era Ali Pasha Mosque, which is located just a few hundred meters further west from Veliki Park. The Bosnian War is ever-present when walking through Sarajevo. From the beautiful gardens that surround the mosque, let's head to one of the most busy traffic arteries of the city. Walking for about 10 minutes along Smaja of Bosnia, we reached the National Museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina and right next to it, the History Museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is housed in a modernist building that is still scarred by many bullet holes from the Bosnian War. On three floors, you can find an eclectic mix of documents, pictures, memorabilia and artworks that document the difficult wartime period of the early and mid-90s. Moving photos, the original phone used by President Izet Begovic during the Siege of Sarajevo and some artillery pieces outside provide a glimpse into one of the darkest times of the city.
Stepping outside, right across the street, you will find the yellow building of the Holiday Hotel, the former Holiday Inn of Sarajevo. This area got to some tragic fame during the city's four-year siege as the Sniper Alley. During that time, the Holiday Inn became an iconic landmark as the battered hotel stayed open and became a base for foreign journalists covering the conflict. The street here was lined with Serbian snipers' posts and was particularly dangerous for civilians to cross. People would either run fast across the street or would wait for UN armored vehicles as protective shields to hide behind. According to local sources who gathered data in 1995, the snipers wounded over 1,000 people and killed more than 200, of whom 60 were children. Walking around the area, you can still clearly see the holes from bullets on the walls of the buildings. I'm here at the area where the sniper alley was, just over there at the Hotel Holiday. And it's a pretty eerie place if you think of the history of what happened here. Now it's a very relaxed atmosphere, but at the time it must have been pretty scary. After so much gloomy history, Let's head back into the city center and enjoy the present time of Sarajevo. In the evenings, the inner city really comes alive and offers a vibrant and festive atmosphere as locals and visitors alike enjoy the many bars, restaurants, shisha places, clubs and cafes. It's the perfect way to end a fantastic day in Sarajevo. For our second day, let's head over to the airport where we will visit yet another powerful landmark of Sarajevo. The Sarajevo Tunnel of Hope, also known as the Tunnel of Life, stretched for approximately 800 meters, nearly half a mile underground, running beneath the airport runway in the neighborhood of Budmir. The tunnel connected the besieged city of Sarajevo with a territory controlled by the Bosnian government in the suburb of Drobinja. This tunnel was a lifeline of a besieged city as Bosnian Serb forces cut off all supply routes and communication channels for four years. The Sarajevo Tunnel was constructed secretly by Bosnian forces in 1993 to enable the transportation of food, weapons, humanitarian aid, people and even livestock in and out of the city. It's a remarkable feat of engineering as it involved digging with rudimentary tools such as shovels, pickaxes and wheelbarrows. The tunnel was dug at an average depth of 1.6 meters, a little over 5 feet, under the airport runway and was supported by wooden beams and metal reinforcements to prevent it from collapsing. Nowadays, the tunnel and the entrance that is located in an inconspicuous building has been turned into an excellent museum and memorial site that is worth seeing when here in Sarajevo. From here, let's head to the 1992 War Museum, which is located just a short walk from the city hall towards the hills of the south of the city. This tiny yet powerful exhibit has been put together by survivors of the Siege of Sarajevo to provide yet another personal glimpse into the lives of ordinary citizens during the Siege of Sarajevo. The museum is run by a family who survived the wartime. There are no guided tours, no entrance fees or even a guard. Visitors are invited to have a look and donate to the maintenance of the museum, which is monitored by a camera. This tiny museum is located right next to our next major highlight of our tour of Sarajevo. And this may well be my favorite spot in the city. Let's take the cable car and head up Trebevic Mountain. From up here, we have fantastic views of the entire city. The 
So this should be a nice hike. I uh, just arrived with the cable car up here. It's about an eight minute cable car ride. The price is 10 euros for a return ticket, about $12. And uh, it wasn't too crowded. I was almost the only one here. There are several hiking trails leading to panoramic viewpoints, but the undoubtedly most impressive landmark is the Olympic bobsled track, or better, whatever is left of it. All right, I'm now at the place where the bob started. This is the beginning of the track. I'm not in the best shape anymore. I don't think this thing has been used ever since, at least uh, certainly not since the war in the 90s. But let's uh, take a walk down this track and have a look. This is a bit of a bizarre walk, I must say. I've never done anything like it. But it's really a cool experience to walk down such a track. It's a paradise for graffiti artists. There's some really cool graffitis here on this track. And, uh, it's in the middle of the forest and uh, nature is taking over again. One of the centerpieces of the 1984 Olympics, the bobsled run, now unfortunately lays in ruins. The area served as a military base for the Bosnian Serbs during the Bosnian War and all sports facilities here fell into disrepair and ruins due to destruction and lack of maintenance. Nowadays, the eerie concrete remains of the track have become the perfect canvas for creative graffiti artists and the whole place is a photographer's paradise. Check this out. A short walk from the track, I end my explorations at the ruins of Bistrik Tower. When you reach the very end of the track, uh, you just walk uh, maybe about uh, five minutes further and you reach these towers here, the Kulag Bistrik. And uh, this used to be um, an Austro-Hungarian fortress first and uh, was later turned into an astronomical observatory. And as you can see, those times have long gone. They have been also destroyed in the war in 1992 and there's only ruins now. But it's a beautiful quiet spot and uh, definitely worth checking out. There's also some interesting graffiti and messages that previous visitors have left here. Um, so all in all an interesting place and I hope they'll do something with this because it's a really nice location. The Chalina Kappa Observatory and Bistrik Kula consists of two towers, one from the Austro-Hungarian period and one from the Yugoslav period. The original was initially built in the early 20th century for military purposes, but later used as an observatory. During Yugoslav times, a second tower was erected next to it to modernize its use as a scientific observatory. During the 1990 siege, the besiegers used it as one of the military strongholds over the city. They used the place to position their artillery, given the excellent views all the way down to the base of the valley. The ruins can be visited and you will again see the numerous scars Buddhas left in the buildings.
it's a great place to visit, but stick to the designated paths, as there could still be a possibility of danger from undetonated mines. When I was there, I joined a small lizard that seemed to thoroughly enjoy the warm summer sun while I indulged in the lush green scenery and fantastic views from up here. So this concludes the list of my favorite landmarks in Sarajevo, but as promised, let's get into some additional information you may find useful for your next visit to Sarajevo. When is the best time to visit Sarajevo? Well that really depends on your preferences. I went in the month of August and truly enjoyed it. But the best time to visit Sarajevo may be the shoulder seasons of May, June and early September, when the heat fades a bit and the city is less crowded. February and March can also be great for winter activities, as the sun is out and the days are longer than in midwinter. How many days are needed for Sarajevo? Well, I think two to three days in Sarajevo will give you enough time to visit all the major highlights in the city. But like in any place, having a bit more time will certainly help, especially if you want to dive a bit deeper into the local culture and maybe take a few day trips to visit the fascinating surroundings of the city. Where to stay in Sarajevo? There are so many options to stay in Sarajevo that it's easy to get overwhelmed. Numerous hotels, both local boutiques or larger hotel chains, offer accommodation in or in close proximity to the city center. But you may also want to opt for a more private stay in a studio or apartment. The latter can be a great choice if you want to meet locals. I stayed in a private rental and still remember the warm hospitality of the super kind hosts. How to get around in Sarajevo? I find Sarajevo to be a very walkable city. All major highlights and landmarks are in walking distance, with the exceptions of the Tunnel of Hope and the Bobsled Track. But Sarajevo also has excellent public transport and you can find buses and trams effortlessly connecting all parts of the city. Uber does not operate in Bosnia-Herzegovina, but you can find taxis. I have not tried it, but there's a taxi app called Moi Taxi that can be used to order transport. What currency is used? The local currency for Bosnia Herzegovina is the Bosnian convertible mark. You can bring dollars or euros, but you will need to exchange them, which is not often at the most favorable rates. I recommend using ATMs to get local currency at the respective conversion rate of the day, plus a small convenience fee. Credit cards are also widely accepted, but it's always handy to carry some local currency for smaller places or street vendors. Is Sarajevo expensive? Sarajevo is a surprisingly budget-friendly capital city and maybe one of the least expensive capitals in Europe, together with Belgrade, Pristina, Skopje and Tirana, which all are also quite affordable for international travelers. Some of the restaurants in the city center have however increased their prices to cater more to a tourist crowd. But for about 10 to 15 dollars, you can get a hearty meal. Public transport is very cheap and museum entrances are generally also very affordable. Depending on your spending habits, you can budget for about $30 per person per day, not counting an accommodation. Can I get by with English? Yes, many people in Sarajevo, especially those working in the tourism industry, speak English. I did not have any issues with language whatsoever throughout my entire stay in Sarajevo and Bosnia-Herzegovina. What should you bring? Well, you will do quite a bit of walking, so bring comfortable walking shoes. Depending on the time of the year, bring weather appropriate clothing. If you're women and you plan to visit mosques, carry a scarf with you. For guys, it's good to wear long pants. A light backpack to carry a reusable water bottle, light snacks, and maybe a power bank can also be very useful. I always bring a hat and some sunscreen with me too. Bosnia and Herzegovina uses the standard European Type C and Type F plugs, so if you're coming from the US, 
you'll need a travel adapter. Last but not least, bring a camera to capture those special moments in the city. Is Sarajevo safe? Yes, Sarajevo is very safe and I felt safe walking around even in the evenings and at night. But like in any place, it is always good advice to stay vigilant and avoid poorly lit areas. It's also a good idea to leave your valuables at home as pickpockets tend to frequent the busier streets around the tourist landmarks and you don't want them to get successful with you. So here we go. With this, I wish you a happy travel to Sarajevo. Please give this video a like and leave me a comment down below. What is your favorite place in Sarajevo? If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel to get updates on my latest travel videos and tips. And make sure to also check out my other videos on beautiful Bosnia and Herzegovina and all the amazing places in the Balkans. Looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Have a good one.